Hello, I'm Aubrey Weimark. It's been about um, 10 years since I've done a YouTube video on uh, tech tights, so I thought it was time I uh, did a little update. Okay, this is uh, my office. Um, in my, it's always a bit messy in here, but it's, it's a working office. And uh, this is where I keep my uh, tech tights. Here's some uh, tech tights I got yesterday. So still loads coming in. In these cupboards I've got a load of stuff which uh, is not yet catalogued. All bits and bobs. Tons of stuff. Too many tech tights really. Oh, can't even open some of these drawers. Bread crusts in there, all sorts. Some Australites there. More Australites. Should sort them sometime. That one's a bit tough. Some of these are tough, it's an old thing. And because I haven't opened them a while, they don't open very well. Oh, look, there's a load of bread crust tech tights that was easier to get in some of these are so full of tech tights they weigh about 10 kilos so they a bit difficult to open yeah like this one it's uh, got a load of tech tights in there these are all from Bickle bits and bobs these are some uh, bread crust this is a uh, burger tech type from Paracarlo so quite a lot of stuff waiting to be looked at there more stuff there so this is a overview of my office these drawers are full of uh, tech tights as well a lot of the drawers they're full of uh, well that's not very full but they're full of uh, the, uh, it's more like it and uh, they're full of uh, material that came from the uh, Bayer collection they're relatively uh, small specimens we can have a look at some of them later but there's uh, thousands of uh, specimens here okay this is my desk area absolute mess but that's the way uh, that's the way I work tech type books lots of I've got duplicates of some of my favorite books and then I've got cupboards full of books as well Bits and bobs, random rocks. These are tech type necklaces. Same here. Never have too many. Um, this is actually my son's been in here. He's built a city of trash packs. Um, but underneath here, we've got volcanic rocks, volcanic bombs, obsidian, that kind of thing. Right, so I will. Um, go through very quickly some of the tech types I have just to give you a quick introduction to tech types okay tech types where do they come from then um, well in the past there's been a number of theories either they were derived from uh, vol volcanoes on the moon they were derived from impacts on the moon they were derived from volcanoes on earth or volcano or, or impacts on earth so which one? I mean, we know they're definitely from the Earth-Moon system. Tektites have not spent any significant amount of time in space. Um, various studies uh, prove this. Um, cosmic ray exposure is very minimal. So they certainly come from the Earth-Moon system. Um, basically, the presence of shock minerals um, has proven that tektites are definitely um, derived from impact events so an impact event on earth or an impact event on space well following the um, Apollo lunar missions first of which was in uh, 1969 subsequent published articles in 1970 19 I think 1970 maybe 1971 um, basically proved beyond any doubt that tektites do not come from the moon compositionally it doesn't fit tektites very clearly come from earth so tektites are derived from large asteroid impacts on earth 
Now, a, a smaller asteroid impact isn't going to do it. You're going to need to open up a crater many kilometers wide to produce true tektites. You can produce some tektite like forms from a crater that's around about one kilometer in diameter or a bit less. But to produce true tektites, you really need a crater in the order of 10 kilometers plus. The crater also has to be on the correct type of rock. This is why we do not get um, tektites coming from the moon. You need to have high concentrations of silica to make a glass. A glass cannot be formed from any parent material. It comes from specifically silica rich sediments which are generally sedimentary rocks like sandstone, claystone, siltstone, shell or their metamorphic equivalents. Um, this way because of the weathering on this planet we get concentrations of these materials so not every large impact will produce tektites. The impact has to be into the right type of terrestrial rock. So the bodies that are impacting they are obviously relatively large uh, features. In fact, the one that um, impacted uh, and produced the Australasian stream field, it was probably in the order of two to perhaps four kilometers in diameter. Now, um, let's have a look in this cabinet here. Um, we have uh, some meteorites. Now, these represent the parent material. Um, meteorites, um, the meteoritic component of tektites is very small. Um, it, it's measured in probably about 0.5% give or take of the tektite mass. Now, um, as you move closer to the impact site, the proximal tektites will contain slightly more um, of the impactor. So this is a typical uh, chondrite here. I think it's probably not quite in focus. You can see the flecks of metal here. Here is a uh, breccia, very nice. I used to collect these when I'm in the UK. Um, I live in Manila, Philippines now, and it's not really a very good environment for meteorites. Some of them are okay, but some of them just rust like mad. Um, this is actually a lunar meteorite, which is very rare. It contains a little bit of green glassy material, which is interesting. This is another lunar meteorite. Um, stony iron meteorite. I had some iron meteorites somewhere if they've not entirely rusted away. I can't see them here so they must be in a cabinet. This is a particularly nice one. An old one. Ah, here's a very nice one. I think I bought this one more recently. I just couldn't resist. It looks uh, it looks very, very nice. So I uh, couldn't resist that one. I had to, had to buy that. It's not rusted. So some, some meteorites are pretty stable even in this... Uh, far from ideal environment so this is uh, the most of these are coming from the asteroid belt so it's really um, this kind of material asteroids or comets impacting with the earth the terrestrial rock and it has to be a silica rich terrestrial rock produced tektites is then ejected into the upper levels of the atmosphere or into space and then it rains down as tektites. Now the material is effectively shock melted. Um, most tektites are simply uh, melt products. So they are um, they're, they're shock melted material. A few tektites, the microscopic ones, a percentage of them are likely condensates. But the vast majority, because they contain um, things like the chatelorite, which is a, um, a high temperature, high pressure uh, melted quartz grain, it proves that these are just simply melted rather than um, uh, condensed and uh, vaporized and then condensed material. So the vast majority of tektites, all macroscopic tektites, are simply melt products of, um, of silica rich terrestrial rock. Okay, so whilst we're here, we'll look at some uh, impact types. Um, here we have, uh, this is uh, Zaman Shinite from Kazakhstan. It's, uh, it's an impact melt, it's mainly glass. 
you can see the swells there. It's it, it's similar in many ways to Mung Nong type layered tektites. Um, this is a uh, glass bomb from uh, Rise. Um, what else do we have here? We have some shatter cones down here. Probably don't show up that well there. Um, some echinoids, totally unrelated. Um, some shattered bellum nights there again from Rise Impact Crater and some other glass bombs. These are called fladdle, um, like pancakes. They're flattened, flattened out. They've uh, uh, and some of them are folded over. You can see. Right, and it, it, here in this cabinet, actually, I have uh, man-made glasses, slag glasses, normal glasses. They're good for comparison. And there's also a few rocks there, things like chert and bits and bobs. And this is another example of man-made glass here.